Hey family, on November 20th through December 1st, 2022, we will have the all inclusive Kenya trip. Now, a lot of times people have said, hey, Phil, when's the next trip we'd like to go? I want to see Africa for myself, but well, this is the time to go. Everything will be taken care of. All the excursions are paid. You can do monthly payments. You know, they'll have a safari and a six city tour. You will see Charlie Island, which is something that we did not see last time on the tour. This tour will be 12 days instead of seven days. So make sure to secure your place on the trip by going to www.wbsvs.com, make your deposit, and then you can start making your payments and we'll see you in Kenya. Hello everyone, welcome back to another broadcast of the African Diaspora News Channel with me, your host, Mari Tawanya, aka Walker Hunters, Sitole Imali. And if you're just joining us for the first time, please do like, share, subscribe, and of course, hit that notification bell for more content. Now, today we're talking about a small town, a whites only small town in the northern uh, Cape province of South Africa, which goes by the name. Orania. Now, Orania is a small town in South Africa that has a 97 population, uh, 97, 97 white population. Now, while there is no law banning black people actually from the small town, um, black South Africans actually have a fear of entering the small town because they believe that the local Afrikaners may be violent or, in other words, racist towards them. Now, the Small town was actually established in the year 1991, and it was created uh, during uh, the last years of apartheid. It was just, just just before apartheid was about to end, and it was meant to be actually a safe haven, according to them, uh, for Afrikaners. And uh, for those who do not know, Afrikaners are an ethnic group uh, that is descended from uh, Europeans who colonized South Africa uh, before the year 1994. Now they actually also speak their own language which is Afrikaners. Now the town was allegedly founded to preserve um, Africana culture. However, even though they are accused of trying to recreate apartheid, they claim that they're just trying to preserve their heritage and avoid crimes. According to Mr. Boshoff, president of the movement of Orion, which is actually supposed to uh, protect uh, the small town and uh, Yes, but to many, actually, a uh, majority of black people, uh, they actually believe that this small town is just bringing back another, you know, era of apartheid. And um, for those who do not know, apartheid was a legal system in South Africa with uh, segregation that displaced uh, black people from farms and limited with jobs they could have, and that ended almost close to 28 years ago. Now, for residents outside of Orania, the idea of self-separation um, you know, of course, like I said, it actually makes them believe that, of course, uh, that uh, the residents of Orania are actually racist. And according to one Afrikaner, a resident who lives there, um, he says that despite the fact that they've been given the nickname Apartheid Town, he said that to be an Afrikaner means that you have an intention and a sort of association with Africa and with South Africa, and that you want to build a future right there, and it's a singular history. He said that there were many problems with crime where he used to live. And, of course, uh, South Africa in general is one of the most dangerous uh, countries all over the world in terms of crime and violence. And uh, Orania boasts actually of having no crime whatsoever, and they actually don't have a police department which I find to be very weird, but okay. Um, one resident also said that Orania is not an all-white town. Um, it just happened to be white because Afrikaners happen to be white. We don't perceive ourselves as white people. We perceive, we perceive ourselves as Afrikaner people, and that is a cultural thing. It is not a race thing according to the resident. Now, you can't actually work in Orania um, except, um, you know, if you have a field that is rare in the small town that is actually 
not a common um, qualification or um, uh, some type of, um, you know, field that you are actually uh, very skilled in. Um, if it's rare in that town, then of course you will be needed. Now, it says that outsiders are not allowed to work in Orania. All these jobs are done by the Africana residents. Uh, the only time they will let an outsider in is if you have skills that, as I've said, the people in the town do not have. Now, even though the town only has a population of um, 2,000 people, as of 2013, it is said that they are reported to have 45 million in savings deposits, 45 million rands. Uh, despite this, this average pay per year per person is just only over 94,000 rands. Now, another shocking thing about the small town is that they actually have their own currency. Yes, they have their own currency. Even though the town is actually in South Africa, they have their own currency called the Aura, the notes of which portrays various aspects of Africana culture and history. Now, in the small town, there's actually a collection of Africana relics that were, you know, were around uh, during apartheid in South Africa, but they were taken down after apartheid. And, um, you know, there are relics of uh, prominent presidents, prominent Afrikaners, uh, former presidents during the apartheid era, uh, war heroes of um, Afrikaner war heroes, and uh, notably Hendrik Van Wood, the former prime minister of South Africa, who had been credited as the architect of apartheid. Hmm. Now, of course, like as I said before, you can't, well, you can't as just as much as the black South Africans don't feel safe entering the town, living in the town, it is said that you also can't move into the town easily. Um, all prospective tenants have to go through an admissions process, which can deny access to people based on things like criminal records. Still, there are no people of color who live there according to them. Now, the town of 1,600 has doubled in population over the last seven years. As one drives around town, construction is, you know, it's very, you know, there's not much construction. And it is no, there's no metropolis, there are no traffic lights, two schools only, and one small radio station. Now, the town even has its own form of currency, like as I've said, which is the aura. Now, I actually, personally, I found it very weird that... Um, you know, a small town has its own currency. Why doesn't it just use the South African rands? Anyway, I'll mention the rest of my, you know, my own opinions after I've reported all this. Um, now, Boshoff insisted that people of color could live in Orania if they were willing to accumulate to the culture and learn Afrikaans. Now, prospective residents are screened by a committee and go through an interview process. Now, people in the town are not opposed to having their own country, though they said they prefer to carve out their own space within South Africa. It is said that we want to build our own heritage and building your own is not the same as breaking somebody else down. He added to the resident that he'd want them to have their own country only if it's necessary and we can do that without bloodshed. Now, I'm going to give my personal opinion of this. I honestly don't understand why they don't just go back to their um their lands of uh where their ascendants where their ascendants come from where you know the Europeans you know the settlers who came to settle in South Africa why not go back such as the Netherlands you know why not go back there because you can get citizenship according to um, your ancestors according to ancestry where your ancestors come from so I really don't understand why they can't just do that instead of staying in South Africa and then having to come up with your own small town, come up with your own currency. And I'm puzzled as to why the South African government has just allowed that to happen for them to create their own currency. Then again, it makes sense as to why it is said that as much as there are black people who are presidents or even ministers in South Africa, there are still white people who are in control behind closed doors in the background who still have the bigger power than the black people who have the high positions in government. So it makes sense as to why this is why, you know, they might not really care that the small town actually has its own currency. And um, I actually, you know, I, I, it's obvious that 
they're racist because the fact that they don't want any black people in there. Probably the only black people, the very, very few black people that are living in the small town are just domestic workers such as maids and gardeners who work for the, the white people. But other than that, obviously, it's just majority, um, you know, whites. The fact that they have Africana relics, um, you know, things that come from apartheid, that are from apartheid, they keep those items. It means they themselves do not want to move on. They want to continue to have that racism, to have that supremacy, that white supremacy over black people. Because if you wanted to move on and you wanted to live amongst other black people, you would have obviously gotten rid of those stuff and you would have also been using the currency that's actually there in the country, which is the South African rand. But the fact that you're using your own currency, it means you want nothing to do with that country. You don't want to live with any other black people in the country. So why not just go back to your ancestral lands in the first place, like as I said. Well, that's it for me today. If you have any comments or any opinions, please do share on our comment section down below. And please, like I said, do not hesitate to like, share and subscribe. And hit that notification bell for more content. It's, and bye for now. it's bye for now and I'll definitely see you in another broadcast. Cheers.